Hey, what's up guys? Sir Amanon here and welcome to another episode of Inside DB Rated. This is a dual commentary series where we go ahead and spectate random matches on DB's ladder and just check out what people are playing. So this is going to be a matchup featuring Nept on Dragon Maid, who we actually featured on the channel previously, versus GG Jibriel XD on Adamantipated Pater Prank Kids, which is a very cool hybrid. I think that with the absence of Link Cross, you know, this deck really is hurting for a consistent combo line, because uh, now there's just no more contained versions of like, you know, how Kefibrax gets you X far. Um, so you kind of have to adapt, and this is one of the cooler sort of uh, evolutions of the deck. But we're going to go ahead and get started without any further ado, and it looks like the Rock or deck is going to take the RPS win. going to choose to go first, and then the opener for the Adamantipator player is going to be Double Supplier, Dragite, Seeker, and Lampsies. So this hand's very strong, has, uh, you know, Seeker plus Adamantipator and an Extender. So there's a couple of different approaches to Adam Antipater with Prank Kids. Uh, Pack actually covered this quite a while ago on his channel, but I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But basically, you can either play like three Roxies and one other name to ladder up into like Appaloosa or just other Link monsters, or you can actually go the entire like way through and go Battle Butler with the uh, one of Fanzies, Lampsies, and Dropsies, as well as the Pandemonium to you know add the Butler to your uh, interruptions. So we'll see what kind of build he's opting for here. And then the Dragon Maid player's hand is Parlor, Ghost Bell, Earnest, Chamber, and Tidying. This hand is pretty decent. It has a hand trap and it has uh, you know, a couple of starters. It always sucks to draw the Earnest or the big Dragon Maids in general, but um, you know, it's not the end of the world. This one actually has a decent enough effect with this hand because it can actually uh, special out both of these starters. So this is not even that terrible. But we're going to go ahead and see uh, the Rock player go first and going to normal summon copy of Dragite, then special the Seeker out of hand. And then Seeker Effect will go and fire off. That's going to summon out a copy of Roxy's as the fifth card, actually. So this will now enable the Prank Kids player to go into some of the Prank Kids lines. So we'll now see if this is, again, just a mere way to Link Climb, or actually just going to be Prank Kids. So it's going to be uh, Meow Meow as a summon. That's going to trigger the Roxy's and the Supplier in hand. That's going to summon itself. And then the Roxy's will banish the other Supplier to search, or rather draw, a copy of the Doki Doki. So that is nice follow-up for next turn. And the Roxies will resolve summoning the Lampsies out of hand. So I'm inclined to think that this means that he's on just a small package instead of the full prank is one, because uh, he'd probably be summoning one from the deck. But to be fair, if he's on a one of Lampsies, even with the Butler package, he would have to summon this out of hand eventually. So I guess it's too early to conclusively say, but that's kind of my in general uh, intuition based on how this is going. So probably going to search for a copy of Guardian. And then he's going to next link summon a copy of Dodo. So depending on if he triggers Dodo here, which he isn't, it's just going to be Lampsies. That means that he's going to go for another copy of Roxies. So yeah, this uh, this is a pretty telltale sign that he's not on the full uh, Roxies, or sorry, Prank It's package. But you have to, of course, play another copy of Dodo because it is uh, Meow has a restriction of a once per turn on its link summon. And Lampsies, of course, has to be linked for a Prank It specifically. So next, he's going to link for a copy of Hawker Fibrax using the Supplier and the Seeker. That effect is going to summon out another copy of Seeker, it looks like. Then he's going to link summon a copy of Appaloosa with the Dodo and the uh, Fiber. So that's going to be a Tunicate Appaloosa. Next, going to Synchro for a copy of the Raptite. Raptite effect is going to then use uh, its effect. <laughs> I don't know why I said that's super weird, but uh, going to hit Taco Crusader. And that is pretty interesting to see still being played. I guess it is a decent go second tool to try and force out uh, various disruptions and such. Then we're going to see the overlay of the Gallant Granite that's going to detach the Roxies and search for a copy of Researcher. And then Researcher effect is going to fire off. That's going to summon itself and then summon a copy of nothing. It actually whiffed there. Um, We've been seeing, though, that he's been uh, excavating like tactics talents and ashes and drills and stuff. So um, it's nice to see that there are or that there is space for these non-engine cards. But that being said, that does dilute your rock count uh, quite by quite a fair bit. But he is going to next synchro summon a copy of Borlode Savage Dragon. That's going to equip the Dodo from Graveyard and then pass. So this is not the strongest or most intimidating board because it's only two monster negates and an omni negate, but he has a fair amount of follow-up if the granite sticks and the doki resolves. So we'll have to see. Uh, for turn, we're going to see a top to kitchen. So that's a, just another normal summon, which is not ideal. Uh, going to summon a copy of the chamber. Chamber effect is going to get negated, and then he's going to use the earnest effect to try and summon out of hand. 
That's going to be negated as well. Battle phase, gonna in the start of battle, use the chamber to try and tag out. That's going to be savage negated. Then he's going to proceed to hit over the Abelusa. And then main phase 2, set the tiding and pass. For Zerim, we're going to see a top deck Adamant's Abrator Signs, which is nice because, um, well, he has Bell to counter it, but he has a Savage as well. So let's play against Savage, or sorry, uh, the Tiding plus the Ghost Bell. Actually, this Bell was in here the entire time. Was there ever a point where we could have used that? I'm trying to think. Because um, he went for the Prankets play, then he went for like Fiber, then he went Appaloosa. Actually, I don't even think there was a chance for him to activate it, uh, like, even at all. Uh, you guys let me know if I missed a window, but I don't think he actually could have used this uh, bell here. That's pretty interesting, up until now. Uh, Gallon Effect is going to grab a search for a copy of Researcher. And then Tackle Crusader is going to actually book him in the chamber. And that lines up pretty well against Tidy because it has to target a dragon on your field as the activation requirement. So that's effectively going to force it out. Tidy going to be used in a spawn striking Savage. Unsurprisingly, Savage will negate that. And then he's going to normal summon the Guardian, and then use the uh, Researcher in hand. That is going to now use its effect to summon nothing again. He's on Parallel Exceed though, so that's pretty cool. I think it makes a lot of sense with Meow. It's like an easy link arrow, and it helps you make Granite, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, this is actually played quite well, because uh, if you like, start out by normal summoning this, then it might get tidying. Uh, I mean, I guess the end result's the same, where he just Savage Gates it, but... I mean, you never know, right? There might be a chance where you just want to hold this, but uh, it's it's nice sequencing, I think. I'm uh, gonna go for Phoenix here, so he's only playing uh, one fiber, which I mean, I guess is reasonable. And I'm gonna go for the signs. That's gonna get ghost belled. Oh, maybe he didn't uh, see the bell here. Uh, going to use this uh, guardian in response. It looks like, and then the signs will resolve. That's going to summon a copy of Dragite back. He could have summoned back Seeker and then start something. Uh, but maybe, yeah, he's going to actually stack the Seeker, so he draws it off the Dragon and then summon the Seeker anyway. So I guess it's not a guaranteed Seeker, but it's still the same amount of bodies at the end of the day with the potential for one more body. So this is actually a more effective play. Yeah, so Seeker effect is going to go and banish, looks like a Supplier, or Excavate, excuse me, a copy Supplier. He's playing Upstart too. So uh, he actually has quite a lot of flex spots. Uh, Spire is going to grab another copy of Guardian. And then he's going to go for a copy of Unicorn. Unicorn going to spin back the chamber. And then going to go for a copy of Axis Code. And this is definitely a game on board. Battle phase, and that is going to be it. So uh, that's going to be Adam Emancipator, or the Rock deck, I should say, taking game one. This is pretty interesting. I do like the concept of just using the pranks as a ladder into Appaloosa or like other link plays. Um, even though the uh, Adamant Superiors have like cool attributes to be able to interact with like uh, the Raptite and the Leonite Synchro monsters, because it makes those effects alive with like the Lampsies and the Fanzies, and even the Dodo is a win for the Raptite. But um, regardless, I still think that it's just nice to be able to not break as much, and that's what this deck could use. But in game two, we're going to be seeing Dragon Maid go first. If you guys are enjoying this commentary, definitely be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new here and want to see more videos similar to this style. But the opening hand is going to be Tiding, Parlor, Nibiru, Rivalry, and Changeover. This is not bad. Uh, this is not the greatest card to draw because it's a one of, but um, it's all right. He doesn't really have a great way to make Shao turn one, I don't believe. Uh, Parlor could send tidying i guess and he can go for seal but i'm not sure if he can actually even use the change over this turn uh somebody can correct me if i'm wrong there but this is a nice floodgate as well in this general format we'll have to see how it actually pans out against this deck because it is a lot of rocks but there's also a lot of extra deck monsters that are not rocks so we'll have to see things like fiber and like the nightmares and like the access code and then for the rock hand it's going to be ash researcher roxies gamma and exceed this is a really strong hand uh, has two hand traps and like a lot of solid plays. A prank it's line, a line to get to granite, and a line to get to fiber. This is really, really nice. Of course, it's going to have to contend against Nibiru and Rivalry, though. Main phase one, going to use Parlor. That effect is going to be Gammud. So no send here. So I guess the whole postulation of whether or not this is even alive this turn doesn't matter, because now it's definitely not live. Uh, going to set the Rivalry and the Tiding and pass. That makes the Cypherms get banished. For time we can see a Lampsy is drawn. Ooh, two games in a row. Not ideal, definitely not ideal. 
But the rest of her hand's uh, really good, so we'll just have to wait and see. Got a normal summon a copy of Roxy's, and immediately that prompts the rivalry. This is interesting because even though the uh, Meow Meow is a rock as well, so it actually can be summoned, um, he obviously won't be able to summon out any of the other prank kids because they are not rocks. So that is definitely a fine time to use rivalry there. And then going to use the Researcher as follow-up, so very good they drew that in this particular scenario. Researcher can use her effect, that's going to find a copy of Supplier it looks like. So that's going to hit the board and search for a copy of the uh, the Guardian. And now that gets searched and then going to synchro for a copy of the Raptite. Raptite effect is now going to fire off and grab looks like a Tackle Crusader. Probably going to be the pick, yep. And from here, I guess you can go Granite, summon, or Search Seeker, summon it because you have a Raptite, and try for more stuff. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that makes sense. So that's going to attach the Tackle Crusader, which actually returns the rivalry to hand. That is pretty sick. Wow, this is actually really, really cool. <laughs> so yeah, Gallant is going to... Oh, he's thinking on summon, it looks like. He's going to drop Nibiru to prevent the search. And because... Uh, looks like the rock player already used the researcher. There's not going to be a lot of extension. And now the Taco Crusader can bounce the rivalry, but um, now it's just not going to matter because... Um, oh, he's going to actually book the Debiru instead. I was going to say, because like now it's not going to matter because so he doesn't have that much extenders. Um, oh, he's uh, saying never mind, it looks like. Yeah, I don't think it would have made a difference anyway. Uh, if anything, like keeping the rivalry up is better because now he's kind of like out of Dragon Maid plays. Uh, at least for the time being. For turn, we're going to see a top deck Ward Legacy Guard Dragon. That would have been really, really good. If, uh... Yeah, and actually, if he set this with Taco Crusader, um... Oh, maybe he said this... I actually didn't catch it. Did he type this in chat when he was, like, going for the initial granite? Uh, I actually did not see when that was typed. Let's go ahead and check real fast. Um... Oh, he said Tackle... After the mirror was dropped... And they said, uh, never mind. All right, so they took that play back. Um, yeah, because like, if you book this, <laughs> then this actually gets to summon since face down monsters aren't identified as any type. But now, this rivalry is actually kind of working a little bit against him here. That's just going to pass. Uh, the def token has a defense of uh, 46, it looks like, and then attack of 45. For today, we're going to see another Ash being drawn. Not ideal. Oh, we're going to just, I guess, go to battle phase and get in there for some damage. And then pass the turn. For turn, we're going to see Ice Dragon's Prison. That is quite good. Um, it would have been maybe worth it, honestly, to just not even beat over the Debiru. Because, like, you know your opponent's on Dragon Maid. So, like, how can your opponent realistically clear their own Nibiru under Rivalry? I probably would have just waited. Because, like, you don't really have that much of an issue since the Rock Token obviously is Rock. So you can just wait until you have enough resources and play. And then maybe go for an OTK. Because like, if this is tidying, which it is, it's going to be turned off. Because it's never going to be alive under a rivalry plus Nibiru on the field. So I probably just pass with this in defense, honestly. Uh, he's going to go and use World Exit Guard Dragon. That's going to bring back the Parlor. Parlor effect is going to be Ashed. And then he's going to set the Ice Dragon's Prison and then pass from there. Pretend he's going to draw another Exceed. Wow, these are just not good draws here. Um... Yeah, not too much to say. Go and almost on a copy of Guardian, and then Battle Phase, attack over the Parlor. And then he's going to use Tiding to bounce the Parlor and the Token. Uh, and then the Guardian's going to get in for 19. Now, there are no rocks to reveal for it to stay on the board, so this is going to just die in the end phase. Yeah, I really think the turn that he attacked over the Nibiru was a pretty big mistake. Um... Just because, like, he was in a such, it was in a pretty good spot where he could have uh, just had the token sitting there, right? Um, so a bit unfortunate. End phase just, uh, goes to Graveyard, and for turn we can see a DD ground. That is that is crazy right here. Um, like, that's going to stifle any potential uh, avenues to follow up. So we're going to see a normal summon copy of Parlor. That's going to be Ashed. Uh, just having, like, all the hand traps. But it doesn't matter, because now he can actually go Striker Dragon, then Tidy and bring it back and go Seal. And from there, like, once they establish Seal, it's going to be really, really hard to hard to stop them. Uh, going to go Striker Dragon and a Bash Tidying for the Parlor. 
and then link up into a copy of Seal. Uh, I could have just gone for damage, honestly. Does this have to summon in defense? It does. Um, so it could have attached for a thousand damage. Uh, but not going to matter, I don't think, too much. For today, we're going to see... Ooh, a Tatek Lightning Storm. That's actually quite good. Uh, a bit late, though. And he doesn't actually have anything to really work with. He could go Meow, but that's... Like, if you know it's on the Prank Kids in an Emancipator deck, like, that's just getting sealed every time. Plus, he could also chain DD Ground, and this just has to be attributed, not sent to Grave. So this actually works under his own DD Ground. Mm, this is quite brutal, actually. I think uh, Dragon Maid wins this game for sure. Uh, oh, he's not even going to pass, which is fair. But now the uh, Dragon Maid player just gets to seal bounce his own World Legacy Guard Dragon, and now he's really far ahead. Enfei is going to use Seal, bounce his own World Legacy Guard Dragon, use Seal Effect. That gets someone like Nurse or something. Yep, Nurse can bring out uh, the Parlor. Parlor can send. And this is this is just uh, this is where Dragon Maid really gets to shine. Gets on Chamber. For Terran, going to draw a copy of Ernest. Didn't really matter what he drew here. He's going to make a second copy of Seal, then go into the World Legacy Guard Dragon. That's going to bring back the Nurse. Nurse can bring back the uh, Chamber or the Parlor. Looks like it's going to be the Chamber here. Uh, chamber effect's going to search, and yeah, that's going to be the end of the game there for sure. <laughs> yeah, There was uh, absolutely no way that um, Dragon Maid wasn't going to be able to uh, win that game from that position. So we're now going to move on into game number three here, and this should be fairly interesting because uh, both of these decks have uh, some control-ish elements to them. Uh, obviously, Rock's a combo deck, but you know there's like a lot of hand traps as well to kind of like help supplement that. But we're going to see Rock's go first, and the, ha the opening hand is going to be Researcher, Analyzer, Guardian, Lamp Season, Seek. <laughs> you do this all three games. I'm just like doing a double take over the fact that this is in hand all three times. I did not watch this replay yet. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's what you call not ideal. <laughs> but yeah, all three tuners is quite nice. And then for the Drag Me player, it's going to be Parlor, Ash, Hospitality, Tank Heck, and Droplet. Uh, starter, Extender, Hand Traps, go second card. And not a great card, but uh, pretty pretty good hand, actually. So this should be an interesting game. This hand is very explosive. Uh, going to normal summon a copy of Analyzer, and then go for a Seeker. And then use the Seeker effect. That's going to find a copy of well, nothing. Ooh, but signing in a pointer. Okay, so seeing a little bit of intel there. And then for uh, the Analyzer, that's going to fire and find Doki. Pretty decent. This can now go for like the Guardian and then insulate himself from hand traps. Or just like force the Ash right here. Doki effect, that's going to bring out Ash. Oh, he's thinking on Doki, okay. I mean, you're not going to be able to do Ash afterwards. You might as well do it here, I guess, to deny the body and the potential ending uh, board of Guardian. Yeah, might as well just do it. Going to Synchro Summon a copy of Raptite with the Doki and the Analyzer. That's going to use its effect to hit a copy of uh, oh Guardian here anyway, okay. So choosing to not go for the Prankids line right now, but he does have the Researcher still to be able to try and hit it. Uh, going to use Researcher now, that's going to use its effect as a misclick. Uh, I'm going to go for another copy of Doki. Doki is a hard one's return on a use. But this doesn't get uh, effects on activations anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. But going to then go for a copy of Halka Fibrex. That effect is going to summon a copy of... Another Seeker. What do we go from here? Going to Link for an Appaloosa. And then Synchro for a copy of Savage. And then Savage Effect to equip. Ooh, this is not great. He committed like his whole hand into just this. Ah, I don't know. I feel like it was maybe worth going for the Roxies. Because like, he was never really insulated from Nibiru at any point up until the Appaloosa, regardless. So, like, when he had, you know, the board of Fiber... Oh, uh, actually, no, he had Guardian. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess. But yeah, I don't know. This is not, like, a super solid payoff. It's kind of tough. Because, like, there's a lot of answers to Appaloosa right now, so it's, like, kind of difficult. But then again, against, like, certain other decks, it could be really powerful as well. Like, Drytron might struggle a little bit. Uh, but then, like, stuff like Nova also answers it, which is tough. Uh, for turn, we're going to see a copy of Warwick's Guard Dragon being drawn for turn. I mean, the board is fine. It's just, like, the nature of the deck, right? Like, the deck can't really pump out the boards that it used to, obviously. Um, 
You know, he wanted to play it safe, which is fair. And we obviously have perfect info where we know that there were no more hand traps, so the Guardian uh, probably would have been lower ceiling than just going for the Roxies there. But, I mean, regardless, you know, it is what it is. Again, this is why the Rocks are not uh, Tier 1 anymore. We're going to start with a copy of Hospitality. That's going to fetch the Savage. And then the Droplet comes out. That's going to send away the Tin Keck and the, uh, the Hospitality itself. So that's going to negate the whole board. And that is probably just going to be about the end of the game. Seeing I want to summon here, you're going to be choosing the Tin Keck. And then going to be sending the Kitchen off of the residual effect of the Hospitality. Uh, from here, he's going to go for a Parlor. And yeah, that's just going to be the end of the match here for sure. Uh, so yeah, that is going to be Dragon Mage taking a 2-1. to one. Uh, Game 3, honestly, it kind of just came down to uh, if they have it. You know, if they had the hand trap versus like if you want to summon the guardian, uh, I don't blame him. I don't think it was a bad choice necessarily because you, know, you see, you know, ghost spell in game one. You see Ash here. You're thinking there's probably a lot of hand traps, so you might want to just like go for what you think is best, which is the guardian. And I, I definitely uh, don't fault him for playing safe, but it's just that the product is the end board. Unfortunately, is not going to be strong enough to uh, combat. Um, a lot of different decks, especially when they draw a drop. I mean, the drop it really sealed the deal anyways. Uh, I don't even think it mattered what board he was ending on because there's no like Buster Lock anymore or anything like that to help insulate from Droplet uh, for this deck in particular. So again, you know, not amazing. And he didn't have like hand traps to back up his plays. So uh, that is just kind of the, uh, the way the cookie crumbles, if you will. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as your thoughts or your feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more informative and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! content. If you want to, you can follow me on all social media platforms or support me via Patreon TCG player. All the links in the description as usual. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.